Hi, I am Diksha Rustigi, student of ISPR Business School, PGDM batch of 21-23. I am currently the president of Placecom Stratex at ISPR. Today I have with me Professor Amit Kanchanbaras, faculty and HOD of Finance and also Area Chairs Placements. Welcome sir, thank you for joining me today. So we have with us a 19 page placement report which is for the PGDM batch of 2022 and today we will walk you through whatever the statistics have been so far for the placements. So Professor Ramit, can you just start by telling us how this autonomous body took birth and how has the journey been so far and what was the composition when, we, when it actually started? Thank you Diksha and hello everyone. So this Placecom Stratex was a birth child of April 2021, which was a kind of culmination from what we saw placements happening in 2020, uh, which obviously we know was a, not a good coincidence from a COVID standpoint of view. So that was our opportunity in the crisis that we saw to create this new initiative and said we experimented uh, with this patch. So it was all students for the students, by the students, with the students. That was the motto of this whole initiative that we had. And it was definitely something that we nurtured right from day one. So a formal body was formed in the form of a president, vice presidents, which were owning and becoming the accountable aspect of it when it came to placements. So the student body were the deciding factors. Unlike any B school where you have faculties and placements team, you had student bodies. So the president was the one at the helm of the affairs who were who actually was the one driving this whole initiative. They knew which companies to come, they knew which roles they had to take, they were in touch with their students, they were in touch with the alumni, they were in touch with the corporates, and they worked very closely with the placement department, not to forget. So it was a very good, I would say, force to reckon in terms of what the placement department did from getting companies, the students took it over in terms of getting ready for the role and we had a solid training department at that point of time which helped in getting resources from the corporates and there was an alumni body which was created because alumni were the main instrumental backbone in terms of giving the right lending hand I would say in terms of the students to get ready for the jobs. Not only did they do that, they also got placement opportunities. Just to give you a stats, 100 plus companies came to the campus, 15% came from, from alumni, 30 plus new, 30 percent plus new recruiters were there and you had jobs which were never coming to ISBR before and that is a I would say commendable job by the placements team at that point of time. The head definitely took it and she was able to get you know placements in the field of market research, digital marketing, taxation, financial consulting, fintech and many more. So that was the whole culmination of the success that this batch did and it all happened in record time of just three months where other B schools were yet to start but we were finishing placements and we had celebrated one full month of Christmas like Christmas came before to ISBR then 25th December last year. That's actually a very uh, good start that we have given to the discussion sir, thank you. Um, can you walk us through the batch metrics? So from what I understand it has been a very you know a heterogeneous batch, batch we had a bunch of talents from various fields apart from the mainstream courses such as uh, engineering such as management and commerce we had students from humanities, pharma and you know other domains also joining. So how was it handling such a heterogeneous uh, mix? Very nice. So I'll tell you what Diksha, the best part of this batch was, they understood the real challenges of what they were going through, what the industry was looking at, knowing that there was a black swan event like a COVID at the back of their mind and industry was definitely not in that same mood what they were erstwhile. So they lived up to the challenge. So they understood that if I'm a pharma guy, if I'm a science guy, if I've done humanities, that's it. Now what I need to go forward is in terms of looking at a career advancement in the domain which I would like to see myself. So a pharma guy took up something in the human resource space, understood what HR practices are, what skill sets they had, what they need to upskill themselves. So that they were going through a rigorous training right from their first year through aptitude test, from speak to lead, from video resumes, building up the resumes and making themselves industry ready depending upon the domain. Alongside when the training from the faculty side, from the corporate, from the mentors, from the industry experts. So the students were able to align themselves that so what I'm a pharma guy, but I still understand HR practices. I still understand, you know, operation. I still understand, you know, the business analytics side of it. So they adapted to the reality 
they understood the reality of what is being there in the market and that is how they were able to get successful i mean kids who would come from a humanities background got jobs in operations people who had taken pharma got jobs in marketing research companies and they were got jobs with excellent roles and needless to say excellent packages so that is how the students owned it up they lived up to the occasion so honestly speaking this whole journey process was about students understanding realizing and connecting to the reality which made the process seamless easy and saw the smiles on their faces uh, when the placements got over great sir so uh, how about the different companies that came to the campus for placement uh, you know various sectors were there as i understand so can you walk us through that sure so this time again as i said the placement head and the placement team had done a lot of work in terms of getting newer roles getting newer companies uh, and i would like to call out amina sattar who really did her wonders in terms of getting the kind of roles which a management student should really get so she got into the helm of affairs connected with consulting companies got in touch with the big fours got those kind of roles and there were a lot of consulting assignment which came which was very much pleasing to a ma management student which he or she looks up to so in the fintech space there was consulting in financial analytics there were consulting hr for example great turn around you had consulting you had hr bp you had uh, hr analytics program management uh, pmo office i mean something which is very rare to hear and many of these roles are taken by laterals which we were getting so definitely that was a commendable job done by the placement team and i would like to call upon that you know the students took up the challenge which certain skills were not taught to them in the curriculum because that was not envisaged but became an input for the curriculum for the next years but having said that with the industry connect the industry experts we were able to connect we were able to kind of you know get those you know uh, skill set delivered and students accepted it the best part was they lived up to the challenge so these were the kind of roles just to throw some stats you had you know the highest bfsi 21% of the roles came from bfsi followed by research analytics of 13% consulting 14% and iti es 14.52%. So these people dominated in terms of the sectors where we got maximum students placed. Now when I say sectors, they were research assignments, consulting assignments and assignments related to fintech, assignment related to really core business consulting roles. And one thing I would like to call out, skills which were coming out in these roles, something which we didn't even in envisage, a guesstimate kind of a skill which we did not hear about, but students understood what this is all about. And they, in a span of, I would say, less than 24 hours, cracked it and they knew how to go about it and were able to crack roles in markets and markets, research company, OSG, search bone consulting. So these were names, you know, I would say that, you know, amazing job done by the placements team to get the roles and students to get you know, absorbed in these kind of opportunities. I think that's a huge congratulations to the whole team, to the institute, to all the students who made it possible to get into those jobs and obviously the full training department which did a lot of effort uh, for them to help them actually get there. So congratulations. Uh, so now let's get into domain-wise uh, placement statistics and let's start with your very own domain sir, finance. So uh, as I understand, the major finance companies that came in are from the BFSI sector and they majorly focus on what we uh, know today as fintech. So can you throw some light on that? Absolutely. So fintech was a curriculum which I had developed for the uh, batch and that started last year and this batch was the second batch who was the beneficiary. So students benefited in terms of what the fintech space is and when companies like Envision came who were looking for fintech core consulting roles, companies like Terrapay came, they were lived up to it and they were able to grab those roles where these were niche offers which were really given to freshers. So that was the beauty part in terms of what they could take away from the roles that we gave, certain certifications we did in the term of reading the numbers, interpreting numbers, how financial numbers have to be read, how they have to be presented, the case study done, delivered by an excellent faculty from the industry who kind of rigorously made sure that students did not lose the business management track though they were finance students, though they were you know, HR students, number one. Number two, if you look at it in terms of the finance roles which came up, it was consulting, fintech, taxation, it went into credit, it went into the roles of you know operations, it went into the role of financial consulting and many more. So companies like HDFC, 
companies like ANZ, first time ANZ came to a campus like ISBR and they had six people. And the best part was they were people from finance, marketing and operations who got that role. Which clearly tells about the fact that you know how students were eager, hunger to really get the best of best what they could be given as an opportunity to take in their hands. So I think that tells you a story about what has happened or what ha this batch did to themselves in terms of embracing the, the uh, opportunities which came their way. Great sir, thank you. Uh, now let's move on and let's talk about the job opportunities that the students for HR got and what, so just walk us through the kind of different roles that they offer, the companies that came in for HR placements and also the compensation packages if you can. Sure. So HR, I would tell you, was always a domain which was not so great looked upon initially and we had to settle with, you know, roles which were like run of the mill. But this time, it was a concerted effort which was done by the entire Placecom comprising of the placement team, comprising of the students, comprising of the faculties, which turned around the entire space of placements and HR was the first department to get 100% placements. So that is the turnaround that happened, which happened through consulting roles in HR, in as I said about the PMO roles, in the roles of HR analytics, in the role of HR IT, in the roles of talent acquisition, learning and development, it was all over there. So the students again understood not the theory part, but also what the practices were being taught, what they were oriented upon by masters, by experts, by people across the industry who walked them through in terms of those domains. So that created the difference and the students aligned to it. So you got a package of 11 lakhs, highest package of three HR students starting the placement with. I mean, what else can you expect from a batch who was completely, you know, in a situation of virtual world and they really started on a great note. And that set the tone for other departments, other students to set up a healthy competition and move forward. That's, that's again very great, sir. Now, um, what is your take on the operations management side? Uh, something that we know as supply chain and logistics. What are the kind of roles that you know come up for the students who want to pursue their career ahead in this domain? Right. So again, operations and HR was a story which was somewhat not much spoken about when it comes to ISBR, but definitely this was a turning point. And this I say is a turning point has now become the right path to move forward. Operations again, they were engineers, you had non-engineers and they were looking for in supply chain, logistics, uh, blockchain etc so students did come up and you know they were more eager they understood that yes in operation this is what we can get and i'm more than happy to and i'm proud of my students like agni dipta sarkar shubham mukherjee pratik sarkar i mean these students were like sir we know this is what we are looking for and this is what we want you you get this for us and we made that happen so it was not the package it was not the it was not the brand which typically an MBA students looks at. These students know the reality and they said, this is the role I want. So they got opportunities in borderless access. They got opportunities in Trinamics. They got opportunities in Tredens. They got opportunities in TCS. They got opportunities in, you know, uh, companies like, you know, Flipkart. And they embraced it because this is what they had learned in the class and they wanted to go back and apply. And this was with a lot of pride, less of any kind of, you know, pressure. And they said, yes, we will live up to it. And today, all of them, I'm very happy to say, are proud. And again, that was the batch which got 100% placements before we ended placements uh, for the last year. Great, sir. Uh, now, also from what I understand, a lot of students these days are, you know, inclined towards analytics and they take business analytics as one of their two specializations. So what do you think how uh, essential this skill is today and how essential it is for all students to develop a kind of thought process that aligns to uh, the analytical skills and how I mean, how is it uh, relevant to the corporate world today? Right. Great question. So this is way, the way it works, industry is moving more in the space of where they would like to do things which is with a science, there's science to that madness and that science to the madness comes with data. So when you're talking of data, there has to be a technology, tools, techniques involved, which anybody should know whether you are a fresher or you are a person who is a seasoned guy in that industry, number one. So what essentially is required to know the nuts and bolts of those technology, to know the ground level details of those technology in terms of what they are. 
So getting to know a skill like R or a Python or an AI or a Tableau or a regression analysis, progressive is good to know from a concept point of view. Now, can you take this and go to a situation, say in a market research or in a financial analytics or into something which has got to do with human resource analytics and see where to apply that. So if you're doing compensation benefit analysis, where do you apply analytics? If you're doing a market research on your new product, how do you apply the tools out there? If you're doing a financial, financial market research on a new investment product, what do you see in that futuristic point of view from a returns on investment point of view? So what are these? So I get data and able to use the same science which I've taught. So it is today a marriage between what tools and technology we have vis-a-vis -vis the domain side and that becomes the blend which is what the industry is looking at. So what used to be a Microsoft Excel which Bill Gates had introduced tons of years back today has become replaced by the new disruptive technology as we call about. It's nothing else and today it's a given, it's a must that you need to have this literacy else you will not survive for longer. Though Microsoft Excel will coexist by the same point of time, you need to have these new age disruptive tools because efficiency, productivity is what organizations are looking at in terms of getting processes becoming more linear, not with the same kind of you know, processes which were running in since legacy for so many years. So the world is changing, the industry is changing, therefore their way of assessing you as a talent is also changing. Do you have it in you is the question. If not, get it. Otherwise, there is going to be a very, very minimal chance of you getting into it and a high chance of you maybe being stand out. So it's, it's something you have to embrace it and you have to take it. Okay. Uh, so now if I have to ask you to sum up all the placement report together and you know, uh, let us know the key takeaways from it. And also if you have any interesting story to narrate, what would that be? So for me, as I said at the beginning, the, it was for the students, by the students, with the students to make sure that they have a smiling face when we conclude placement, we achieved it. And we achieved it in flat three and a half months. So that is something which was a dream, which was there in April 2021, and we saw reality happening there. The entire journey was a proof of I would say concept of excellent, meticulous process laid in place, executed to the finish with everybody. I mean, it was a proper teamwork. I wouldn't, I mean, I, for me, it was more like an organization that we are running. It wasn't a project. It wasn't any assignment. I mean, you had the managing director, you had the director of academics, your director of admissions, you had the placement head, you had the team, you have the faculties, the students. I mean, the entire cohesive force was there. So to me, nothing brilliant than that. And that is what we were able to see. So I think if I were to sum up the report, it was a act of class teamwork that has happened at ISBR, cutting across every single pillar of ISBR, it's not to call out only one. And I think it gave a new perspective, a new way to look at how placements needs to be therefore done, how it needs to be understood. And students need to be at the helm of affairs because ultimately it's for them. I think so that is what I would call out and that is what I would suggest that understand the realities as soon as you understand you are able to accommodate it and you are able to move forward that only solves and makes your job easy. So it's not about a push agenda, it's a pull agenda where the design is created in such a way that you are pulling in recruiters towards you rather than the institute pushing the students towards the industry. So that is what I would like to say at the end that if this is, to, this is not something difficult, some of the best we school follow it and they've been doing for ages. And we have just started it, so, why, so we are in that league. And that's something which is very, very proud to say from an ISBR point of view. Thank you so much, sir, for such an information, uh, informative session. And I'm glad that you could take time for us to discuss the placement report. Thank you so much for joining me today. At last, I would just like to conclude and you know tell everybody that it has been as a student for me a very very wonderful journey and I am for myself seeing that how you know the placements are going on here. I have seen the whole cycle. I have seen how much effort the institute has put in to ensure that every student is eligible enough to be sitting for the interviews and they are groomed at every single stage. It does not start towards the end but it starts at the very day you are into the college. So I think uh, all the faculties and the, and the management uh, 
every student owns a gratitude to all of them so thank you thank you diksha thank you for having me thank you all